According to a report from the International Energy Agency, by the year 2020, the United States could be exporting more oil than Saudi Arabia. And by 2035, we could, in fact, be getting by on our own supply of oil and natural gas. When this came out, it was huge news, right? American energy independence, it's supposed to be awesome. But we thought to ourselves, you know, can't we do better than that? There must be new technologies out there we could be looking at. And when we looked around, we discovered, yes, there are lots of them. These are the ideas that we think stand the best chance of bringing home true American energy independence. When I was in college, I decided to study Italian, and uh, it turned out to be a really dumb decision because it turns out very, very few people speak it in the world. This is, in fact, the first professional cause I've ever had to speak Italian, and I'm kind of excited about it. So we're gonna do the intro to this thing in my terrible college Italian. You ready? Here we go. Pisa è conosciuto per tanti cose. La storia, l'università, chiesa, e c'è qualcosa, ma l'ho dimenticato. What Pisa also has going for it is that along its open coastline here, it gets absolutely pounded by waves. There's an incredible amount of energy in the ocean. The trouble has been that the open ocean is just too powerful for most machinery. If you stick the equivalent of a wind turbine underwater, it's going to be ripped apart in a matter of hours. But there's a new company here in Pisa that's developed a technology that can not only survive the open ocean, but can actually collect power from it on an ongoing basis. So, as I understand it, you have a PhD in mathematics. Yes. But now you're in a very different business. Yes, my previous life. And then out of my passion for sailing came this thing. In the year 2000, we did a crossing of the Atlantic Ocean on the Columbus route. I saw a floating container, which probably got lost from a ship. And it was floating on the surface of the sea. And these big seven meters waves were moving it around in circles. And the perception was that's really a huge amount of energy and force and if you can harness that that's going to be very interesting and it took a few years to go from there to, to this. Why ocean power rather than wind power? Wind is much less effective in transporting energy because of the density of air. Water actually concentrates wind energy so you can have a much more compact machine you can forecast waves even two days in advance. So it's actually by far the most predictable renewable source. The problem with water is survivability. When you have extreme events in which the energy is a thousand times bigger than average, your structure will break down. So tell me about the power output of this unit. So this unit is 150 kilowatts. For a machine like this, which actually follows the energy in the water column, power rating is something that you have to set in advance. It's not something really related to the structure. This machine on the surface would produce more than a megawatt. It would break down because it's not being engineered to take all that energy. So we decide to put a level at which the machine will start getting down in the water column to avoid more than that. So it tries to follow the nominal power, which is very different with respect to other renewables, which have a very variable output and you compute the average. So you can even use it in very small grids and that for us is a huge market because many small islands around the world have problems in generating electricity they have very very high costs of electricity much higher than what you would get with a machine like this for the units to achieve buoyancy they use this high density polyurethane foam it's the same kind of stuff although at a different density that you would see you know in surfboards uh, the kind of things that they make the blanks out of and shape them out of Wood. Yes, wood is one of the best construction materials out there in terms of density and elasticity. Actually, we went a long way to find certified rainforest compatible wood, mahogany actually. The whole machine doesn't react to the impulsive energy of the waves. It just moves with it. This is a permanent magnet electrical generator, a 15 kilowatts generator. There are several of these in the machine. It is a standard unit. It doesn't have any special configuration. That is essential in a commercial machine. So you already have a paying client for this? 
Yes, NL, uh, actually NL Green Power, they are a new boss division, but these units, they are very committed to marine energy, to wave energy specifically, and we see them as strategic partner to us. If this pans out in the real world the way it does on paper, presumably they will order more? Many more. I liked a few things about this project. For one thing, it's very survivable. I mean, just the durability of it, the fact that they're willing to guarantee to their clients that it'll last 15 years underwater is pretty unbelievable. It's also got some very smart little design features, like, you know, it surfaces on its own uh, in order to be serviced, so you don't have to send a highly paid team of divers down to risk their lives. And wave power is really predictable, right? Much more so than solar or wind. You know two days in advance when a set of waves is going to roll through. Any surfer can tell you a project like the 40 South project really could tip wave energy over into being a very viable solution for the future.